So in this video, I'm going to talk about all my Instagram secrets. I know a lot of you have been asking me what cameras do I use, what apps do I use, and how do I edit my photos on Instagram? Well, I'm going to answer all that and more here. So keep watching! So first things first, what cameras do I use? I use four types of camera. The first one is my Canon 5D Mark III. Ta -da! This giant thing is what I use for my blog photos. So I also have an i5 memory card inside, which allows me to transfer my photos straight from the camera to my phone and onto Instagram. Another camera that I use is my Sony A7S. So that one, I used to use it for all my videos and I liked it because it was a smaller option and it still produced really good photos even for my blog. So that one is Wi-Fi capable and goes straight to my phone as well. And my third camera is my latest baby, which is what I'm using now to shoot this. It's my Canon G7X Mark II. So this camera is what I'll be mainly using for my vlogging, but I've also been using it um, during my trip in London. So if you've seen all my photos from London, then that was used. So this camera was used to take those photos. And the fourth one is the one that I use when I'm feeling extra, extra lazy. It's my iPhone 6S Plus. Um, this takes really great photos. You don't even need like a fancy camera for Instagram really. This is more than enough. It's got really good resolution. So I use it quite often as well, especially when I see random like nice things that I want to post on Instagram. So there, these are the four cameras that I use. Now that you know what cameras I use, next up are the apps. I use quite a bunch of apps. I have a lot of apps here for photo editing as you can see. But the three apps that I really really use the most is Snapseed, Visco, and Facetune. It's just these three. Most of the time it's always just these three so I'm not gonna show you the rest. It's just these three. I repeat, these three. The Snapseed is free. Um, it's awesome. I think it's the Photoshop for for iPhone or for phones because it allows you to control the colors, the brightness, the contrast. So this is where I really toggle all those settings the most. Next is Visco. Visco, I love it for all its filters. I actually downloaded, downloaded it when it was really, really still new. And at that time, they had a lot of sales for the filters and the presets. And that's how I got to buy all my presets. Like I'll show you. Like, I have a lot, so there. But really, I just use two, which is A5 and A6. It's really just A5 and A6 all the time. The third app that I use is Facetune. Now, Facetune, I really love because it you can do a bunch of stuff. You can prettify, you can like take out all the flaps that you want to be taken out. You can smoothen your skin and all that pretty stuff. But most of all, I use it for color correcting because there's a nifty tool here that allows you to color correct your photos. So now that you know the apps that I use to edit my photos, it's time to see how I edit my photos. But before that, I have to discuss first um, hashtag feed goals because I know a lot of you are really interested in hashtag feed goals. Um, how do I fix my photos? How do I choose which photos to go on next? I usually save all my photos on Visco, all my Instagram photos and try to you know, fix all the patterns here. So as you can see, I plot them first before I post them so it's not just like a random pick of photos on Instagram. Let's say I just posted a this photo of macarons and then next photo would be let's say mm, this product shot, flat lay. I tend to shy away from these things because I don't like how they are beside each other like it's so they're so similar it's so messy so that's why the way that you position the photos next to each other is really important and Visco is cool with all the layouts and stuff because here I can see how it'll look on my Instagram feed I also pay attention to the colors of the of the images beside the new photo so let's say let's delete that let's say all these are like this will be eventually here and this will eventually come to this side so this will have green blues blues so i don't want to choose anything that's green or has a lot of blue in that photo so maybe let's choose something that has these colors there too like more browns more yellows so i could choose let's say um, a much more solid background as well so maybe something like this one 
So there, you see how the colors jive together and how the composition is, they're not fighting with each other. It's more, it's more like an, this one has, has a more solid composition. This one's a bit messier and this one's again more solid. So that's how I arrange my photos. I hope you got, you understood what I'm trying to explain. So now that you know how I fix my hashtag feed goals, it's time for you to see me edit in action. So with this one, I already pre-selected the photos that I want to post and edit for you guys. So let's go to tutorials and I want to post this yummy photo of desserts. So as you can see, this is a photo that I've chosen. What I usually do is I try it first on Visco. If for example, if I put my my usual filter, if it's good enough, is it is it is it nice enough already? Maybe I don't have to fix it already on Snapseed. I think in this case, we have to fix it on Snapseed first. Just so we can fix the colors first and the contrast and everything else. So tutorial. There you have it. So first thing, I want to fix the perspective. As you can see, it's kind of like skewed. It's not really the right perspective yet. So I want to fix the vertical perspective. I went to Snapseed, transform, and you can see here, you can transform it vertically or horizontally. I choose vertical because as you can see, it's like vertically wrong. Is that even right? So, and then you swipe, you swipe to the right or to the left to adjust it. So I think here, Wait, there's rotate. So I rotated it. And then I want to crop it a bit so that this pink thing is in the middle. So I go again, I go to crop. And then free. I choose free, but you can choose a lot of different sizes here as you can see. And you can move it around the way that you want it, adjust it. But I want to do free. So I can adjust it the way I want it to. There you go. I think I need to fix a bit of the perspective still. Mm -hmm. Maybe horizontally as well. Okay. Copy it again so that the pink one is still in the middle. There's an empty space there and I don't like it. Okay. There. And then I go to Tune Image. I usually toggle the brightness, contrast a bit more, and ambiance. I call it ambiance. Okay. And then shadows, of course, and highlights. So shadows, I like it because sometimes it gets too dark when, when, when the colors are dark, like for example, the brown parts. But if you move the shadow, as you can see, it gets a bit more, like the details come out a bit more. Sometimes when you adjust the contrast so much, the shadow, you kind of lose the highlights and the shadows. And that's why you have to fix the highlights and the shadows. Highlights is the exposure, the parts that get so white out and so bright and everything. Sorry, my friends love me too much. Let me turn that off. Okay, so there. You can also go to details, a bit more, so it's a bit sharper. So again, I went to details, structure and sharpening, so. And then, I also like to go to tonal contrast, just to see how brighter, you see the difference, like it from, or is it just me? There. I also like to go there, that makes it, I feel like it makes the image sharper as well. Some people like to do HDR, but for food, I don't really see the point because I think it's too much. Let's just stick to this. So save a copy. And then I go to I go back to this goal. Hello. Okay. And then I put my filter. Just to make it a bit darker, moodier, to go with the rest of my feed, I make it 
a bit more saturated and then as you can see it's on the warmer tone and I don't like that so let's go to temperature put it a bit lower and I see a lot of red as well so let's go to tint I want it to be a bit on the greener side so green And then we sharpen it a bit more and a bit more clarity as well, which is kind of like structure on Snapchat. There you have it. It's just really playing around with all the little details. So there, this was the one before and this is after. As you can see, it was really much more colorful before but because my feet is more on the cooler side and more on the moodier side I have to adjust the filter as well but I want the pink to still pop out though so I save it again and go back to Snapseed and you see this brush so in brush you can dodge and burn Toggle the exposure, temperature, and saturation. But you can select which parts only. So I go to saturation, plus 10, maybe just plus 5. And then do it here. On the pinks. You see it? Ta-da! Now it's pinker. Save. And now, there you have it. Next up. So I want to post another photo after this. I usually do like person, not a person, person, not a person, person, not a person. So next one is a person. I think I'm going to post this one. So it's a beach shot of me. As you can see, the colors of this one, is it kind of matches the colors here. That's what I like to do, like skip this and match the color here. So again, I test it out on Visco first. I actually kind of already like how it looks on this goal. So you can just adjust it here. So I adjusted it like this, like so. Should we adjust the contrast? No. Definitely always sharpen. I always like sharpening my photos. Let's see. Shadows are better. Yep. Highlights a bit just so just to lose the whitened parts and we, we get the details even more. Pop it. And maybe vignette. So vignette darkens the corners, makes it a bit more dramatic. So there. Easy peasy. But I want to control the colors. As I told you before, I also use Facetune to correct the colors. So I'm gonna show you right now how I use Facetune. So I open the photo that I just edited on this goal. As you can see, I have oiliness here and I wanna remove that. So I just go to smoothen. So again, you just go here, smooth. This will make it smoother, but this will just make it smooth. So let's go to smooth so that it's a bit more natural. So you could like just zoom in, zoom out. I wanna zoom my pimp, I wanna smoothen this part so my pimple is gone. But my pimple is still there. Use smoother, it's still there, but there's still a way to remove it. So let's focus on the parts that are kind of oily. See? Ta da! So there, major, major difference. You can even smoothen your legs if you want to. Smoothen those legs. Smooth operator. There. I don't want you guys seeing the frown here that I'm doing with my eyebrows. So what I do is I go to tones and then I go to picker and pick a color that's different to this part because you know when you do those things it gets darker here right so if you want to remove that then you get something that's lighter so I got the lighter part I pick this color and then go back to tones and then just 
casually erase it casually so you see the difference now and I can choose to smoothen that again just to remove it even more Ta-da! now I'm no longer mad I am just Zen and then I told you I have a pimple here and I want to remove it so I can use patch tool so you use this so this is the area that you want to patch right and you can just use this to choose whichever area you want to put there so. I also want to change the color because again it's still a bit more yellow and I want to make it maybe a bit bluer so I go to filters and you can choose any of these like paper and lighting I want to go to lighting I always go to cool or blue so let's go for cool there. so you could toggle that as well you can make it even bluer or lighter let's make it a bit lighter there and I don't want this part to be cooler I only want my body to be cool so I can go to wipe and as you can see I can just wipe it so you can apply clear fill I choose to wipe so just wipe it so it goes back to its old color Now, I want this part to be more details as well. I want it to be sharper. So I go to details and just go over there. And just do that. So now everything is mega sharp. There you have it. Now, what if I want to color my hair as well? Well, you could do it with tones. For example, here I used to have like purple, pink, ends but you can't really see it so much in this photo so what I do is I can go picker and I just pick this part so it shows me that it's in the darker side of the violet I want I want people to see more of the lighter side so here I move it a bit choose a lighter color maybe like just put a bit of that here you can erase it as well if you feel like it's too much Maybe I don't want people to see him balding there, so I can choose like a darker color as well. Picker there, tones, just darken it. Ta da! See? Magic! Okay, so next photo, let's choose this one gardens. So when it comes to um, just random things like let's say view or the garden or the beach I really like to use Snapseed first so that all the colors pop out and everything's very HD So let's go to Snapseed So again, I always start with tune image first so brightness, contrast, ambiance, shadows Put the highlights down a bit so you see the yellows come out again, the whites before, after. And then I go to HDR. So you could choose nature or people. I don't really use fine or strong. I like to use people because it's less unrealistic, you know. I think HDR for nature is more like boom, HDR. <laughs> I don't know, but I like to choose people. And then I still like lessen it a bit. We'll lessen a bit. Again, I like to use tonal contrast. A bit more, so it sharpens it a bit more. And then detail still. So super HD. Now it's super HD. Um, there's a nifty tool here that I also want you guys to see. It's healing. So healing is kind of like the patches tool that I showed you a while ago for Facetune. So for example, if you don't want this certain flower to be there, then you like this flower, then you could just heal, 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 ta-da, flower disappeared. Or you can also, let's undo that because I want the flower there. Okay. And you can also choose selective adjust. So you can choose, like for example, you could just, this part, I want it to be brighter. 
because I think it's darker than the rest. So I go there. You can make it bigger or smaller, the area that you want to adjust, big or small. You see B stands for brightness, C stands for contrast, and S stands for saturation. So you can like toggle it by yourself, like if you want to brighten it, maybe more contrast, less saturation, and you'll see that it is... See, that's a tiny, tiny spot actually changed. See? But I don't want to do that, I just want to show you guys that nifty part of Snapseed. So there. Let's save it. Let's go back to Visco. Just to apply my favorite filter, A5. Let's lessen it a bit. There, so I've cooled the photo down, made it much, much moodier. Let's sharpen it just a tiny bit more. Maybe adjust the highlights. It's too bright. So let's adjust the highlights. Make it a bit more moody. Too much contrast there. Okay. And then let's ask let's add vignette again. To darken the sides, make it more dramatic. There you go. Next. Let's choose this photo for example. As you can see, the line here, it's kind of the same as this one, right? And we don't want that. We don't want two similar images beside each other. So what I will do is, let's fix the colors first. As you can see, it's kind of really dark inside, but the potential is there. And I want the potential to come out. So I go to Snapseed. Let's fix it first. So in Snapseed, it sometimes straightens automatically and usually it's correct. So I'll just move it just a tiny bit more. Uh -huh. Then crop it because I don't want the rest of the things to be seen. I just want it up to there. Mm -hmm. Now we do brightness, contrast, shadows, because this is too dark. It really has to come out, so shadows. Bit of ambiance also. Also fixes the shadows and highlights. Some highlights, put it down a bit so this part will come out. Selective because this part is really dying and I want it to be much more alive. That's just a contrast. And the brightness. Come over here, put in the contrast. Let's do tonal again, so it's, you see it, makes everything sharper, automatically. You can adjust it still, but I like it as is. Some more details, just sharpen it a bit more. And then we can saturate these parts more so the colors will pop out. And then I use afterlight, so this is what I use to flip the photos. So I want to flip it to the other side because a while ago it was too similar to the previous photo. So I go to here, the crop area, and I use this flip horizontally. You can also flip vertically. So you flip horizontally, done, save. So now it's cool because now it's the opposite sides. So let's apply my filter as per usual. But I think the colors of this two are too similar though, right? Which we don't like. So let us change the color through Facetune, as what I've said. I always like to use Facetune for color correcting. So a while ago, I showed you how to change the color through filters. Now I'm going to show you how to change the color through tones. So what if I want to make this a bit yellower? So Color it. And then zoom in so you can erase the parts that you don't want colored. For example, the floor. Now it's 
yellow. Let's make it even more perfect. Let's put the yellow filter. So I can clear, because I just want this part to be, to have the filter. So I clear and just apply on this area. And now you've got it all yellowed out. Now if you want it to be not as obvious also that you colored it, you can smoothen it. So then everything just blends in well together. Now your feet is awesome. So there you have it, a very comprehensive step-by-step -step tutorial of how I edit my photos for Instagram and all the tools that I use to create Instagram magic. I hope that you guys learned something from it and you got all the helpful tips that you needed. If you have any more questions or if you just want to know more about the apps that I use or the cameras or whatever I do with my Instagram photos, then just leave a comment below and I'll answer them as soon as I can.